Welcome to 888 Poker's YouTube channel. I'm Chris Eubank Jr. And I'm Vivian Saliba. And today we're going to be talking about navigating the early stages of tournament poker. So hello Chris. How are you doing today? Very well. Good. So let's get into it. Early stages. That's a fun time to play poker, especially if you know what you're doing. I would say when you're playing very deep, you have over a hundred big blinds, probably this is the toughest time to play poker. Toughest. Because if you make a mistake, it will cost a lot in big blinds. So if you make a big mistake and you lose all your chips, suddenly you lost 200 big blinds, that's a hell lot of big blinds. <laughs> when you're shorter and you make a mistake and you have 15 big blinds, you know, normally also, equities are closer because you have a better return to them that money that is involved and a lot of things to consider so yeah uh when you are confident with your game and you think you are a good poker player i would say always play from the beginning you can take a lot of advantage you can capitalize a lot in big blinds you can profile your opponents without having to play big pots or spend a lot of money, you can really pay attention, Hey, say, hey, I'm gonna sit here, uh, observe everything that is going on, uh, what are each of my opponent's tendencies, how they play, and when the blinds are higher, you can start taking the money in. So you would say that starting from the beginning is better than buying in last minute, because I know a lot of players usually do that, try and get them, you know, to so they don't risk getting stacked early, you know? There are arguments for both. I personally prefer to play from the beginning. Uh, like I mentioned, you can pay attention to how your opponents play. You can capitalize because a lot of players will play way too many hands. They will overplay their hands. And if you have a little bit more experience, can be a very profitable stage. When you're playing very deep, um, a lot of hands like suited connectors, small pairs, they have a lot of value because if you hit the board, you can win huge pots. Uh, when you are playing shorter stacks, this type of hands, they don't have so much value anymore. And you're gonna be focusing in hands with a higher absolute string value. So higher pairs, higher cards, and not these hands that can potentially hit something and you can play several straights and bat and win huge pots. I was playing an online tournament recently and I was about to get blinded out and um, I was just getting terrible cards over and over again and then I, you know, I was close to getting blinded out and then I got four or five of hearts and I thought, oh, that's a good looking hand. You know, maybe I should just shove with this hand and I was about to do it and then it, it it timed me out, um, which is actually lucky because I watched the ball come out and I didn't hit anything. Um, and then I ended up just going all in with, uh, I think it was like King Seven. But I'm guessing that, like you said, you know those suit connectors and you know can't, you know those those types of hands that can make you a lot of money when you're deep are not the type of hands you want to play when you're short. Absolutely, that's right. You just want high cards, right? Yes, because the chances of someone calling you are higher and you want to have this high card advantage. Okay. So the 5-4 is not performing in general very well in this type of situation. And I would say another thing to have in mind is that let's say you have a queen, which is a very, very strong hand. And normally if you have 30, 40 big blinds, you would get involved and go all in for flop. If you're playing 300 big blinds deep, for an example, you don't want to get all in preflop with this type of hands. Mm. Um, you need to be careful when you're very, very deep. Yes, aces, you would love to go all in, kings most of times, but um, you need to be careful when you're too deep about compromising huge chunks of your stack or all your chips. Unless you have aces. Yeah, always go with aces. <laughs> So what do you think about late registering where you've got, you know, an edge, I guess, where people have been playing for a while and you come in fresh right at the end with a, you know, a decent amount of chips and, you know, you can kind of just 
you know, I guess it, could, it can be seen as an advantage because a lot of people have been playing for a while and they've only, you know, they maybe still have the same amount of chips as you're going to buy in at, you know, right at the end. That's true. It can be an advantage and being fitter is always something to consider. Um, if the tournament has a good structure, I would say, yeah, you can late register if you still have over 30 big blinds or so, uh, it's very playable. But sometimes you will late register, your opponent's gonna have 56 big blinds and you're gonna have 15, and then you're gonna have to get involved soon in an all-in and you're just gonna be pushing variance. So this is why I prefer to play from the beginning. But let's say you're a little tired and you want to play in this tournament, you can rest a little and late register, absolutely. So Chris, uh, let me just give you some quick direct tips so if possible, play from the beginning, profile your opponents, and don't overplay your hands in the early game. Of course, um, in the later stages, yes, chips sometimes have to go in, but be very careful with all in spread flop in the early game. Thanks for watching again. Stay tuned for more episodes, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.